How can someone that seemingly has everything feel like there's still something missing? Yeah, so um, I can give you a couple answers to that. It's actually very common. So, I mean, one of like the probably the most, you know, financial well off client I ever had, he was making $3 million a month and, you know, just rocking it out. Um, but he was unhappy. He didn't feel good as a dad. He didn't feel good as a husband. Um, and, you know, and I started working with him and, and helping him. And, you know, six months later, his wife was, you know, thanking me on how much he's transformed. And, oh, by the way, he was at 20 million a month. <laughs> um, wow. and, and so you'll actually find that a lot of the people that get admired for their hustle, their grind, their, their, uh, you know, discipline, their consistency, it's actually a coping mechanism. And I know that because mine was. So, I mean, I, I did, I did a video a day every day for 12 years without missing a day. Like I'm one of the most consistent people you'll ever meet. I'm a soldier. And people would applaud my consistency and my discipline and everything. But the reality was, is that was a coping mechanism to prevent me from connection. Mm. And it's the exact same thing that when you go to the family reunion and the same aunt is doing all the cleanup. She's doing that because she thinks that's the only thing that adds worth to her on this planet. Mm. It's her doing work. It's her, show, or it's her serving others and helping others. And so it's actually, a, um, it can be a combination of low self-worth, of unsuredness. And then that leads us into the, the second you know, part of the, the equation, which is uh, very um, technical, if you will. Um, and that's the concept of sacred wounds. So a sacred wound is... What did you need most as a kid, but didn't get? What did you need most as a kid, but didn't get? So for me, it's a long list. Safety, friendship, uh, recognition, love. Um, you know, like it just, the list goes on and on and on. Well, the problem with a sacred wound is you didn't actually build the receptors, the dendrites, to actually learn how to accept that. Yeah. So you can spend your entire life, you know, if you, if you didn't get love as a kid, you can spend your entire life wanting to feel love, but you literally don't know how to accept it. And so you go from relationship to relationship to relationship, and these people do love you, but you don't really see it that way. You can't really accept it. So you think they don't love you. And, and so you just kind of tumble through space and tumble through time and go through all this, this heartache for an unknown reason. Mm -hmm. Well, the good news about sacred wounds is because we so wanted them so much, but didn't get it, we struggle to accept it, but we can actually give it. And that's what actually makes us feel good. So I'm very good at recognition. I'm very good at inclusion, right? So I was the table lamp. I mean, I remember sitting, I, I remember, and I, I, you know, I've thought back to these days as a kid, they made me sit in the trunk. There were only three other people. Why was I sitting in the trunk? There's no, there's literally no reason I'm sitting in the trunk. I was a table lamp. I was something they had to deal with. I was something they had to continue to feed. That's what I was. And so I'm very good at doing the things I didn't get as a kid. I'm good at recognition. I'm, I'm, I'm good at relationships. I'm a good friend. I'm good at providing safety. I'm good at all these different things that I didn't get. But I was never good. I was always seeking for me to be a priority for someone, never finding it. But that changed when I found God. 